Yes, the, the idea is the following. Um, suppose you hear a word in some, a word is used in, uh, uh, by your mother, uh, and suppose the word is dog, uh, and in the place where your mother uses the word dog, uh, there's, as you can imagine, if it's the kitchen, there are the dishes and the uh, ceiling and uh, other people in the room and so forth and so on. Uh, there are all sorts of circumstances uh, in which the word gets used. So suppose you want to learn the word dog in that circumstance. One thing you might think is, well, you store all the possible interpretations there could be by looking wildly around the room and seeing what's there. There's dogs, there's dishes, and so forth. And then you wait till the next time you hear the word uh, and ask yourself, uh, what's still around, okay? And presumably there's still a dog around, but there are all sorts of different things uh, uh, in the environment. So that's the usual story of what people do, is they keep track of uh, all of the circumstances in which um, a word is used each time they hear it, uh, and then they do a, sort of an implicit comparison after a while, and choose the one that lines up most regularly uh, with um, the use of the word. So a dog will be there more regularly than a dish uh, in the long run. So that's the general story that people tell. Uh, but it's really quite a ridiculous story because there are too many things in the world. And if you literally, if you actually didn't know what a word meant and you attempted to keep track of everything else that was around when it was used, uh, you would explode uh, memorially. Okay, so it, it just doesn't make any sense uh, that the system should work that way. Uh, and moreover, you should, if, if that's the way you work, you should be making a lot of mistakes along the way. So what we propose instead is that the child uh, waits uh, and makes a conjecture only under circumstances where um, there seems to be very strong evidence for taking one good guess. And then if the child makes a guess at all, it says, everything else is out. I forget the, everything. Okay, I only remember that I guessed dog or dish, as the case may be. And then the child waits for one more case of somebody saying dog. And if again, suppose if the child said dog, and again there's a dog, that's it. So now you store the word for the rest of your life. Okay? So you one conjecture plus its confirmation the next time it's used. Now you never had to store whole sets of dishes and... Uh, uh, and so forth. Suppose you were wrong with your guess. So the next time you hear it, you thought dog meant dish, the next time you, you hear it, it's very unlikely that again there's going to be a dish. So you throw it away. Notice this conserves memory. Um, and it yields errorless performance because you're just not going to use the word until you have these, the, a case and its confirmation. So that's the story. Yes, we have experimental um, uh, evidence uh, for that. Um, uh, and basically the evidence looks like this. Uh, suppose you had used this other theory and just to continue the example, you stored the dog and the dish. Okay, but really you thought it was a dish. Uh, then the next time, um, let us say if you saw two things, you ought to guess, um, uh, but there really was a dog there. There was a dog and a dish, but you guessed dish. So the next time you hear it, uh, even though you thought it was a it meant dish. When you see a dog, you'll say, hmm, even though I thought it was a dish, there was a dog there. 
and there's a dog again. So you guess dog in the condition where there are two things more than 50% of the, of the time, okay? So in other words, you sow some evidence of having stored those alternative cases. So we can set up a situation in the laboratory uh, where we present a certain number of, we manipulate the world, so we present a certain number of objects uh, and, um, uh, and see whether you um, uh, take advantage of the guess you didn't make uh, to improve your next guess. And the answer is, even in simple circumstances, no, people don't remember anything but the conjecture they actually made. They just, there's nothing there. It's really very surprising. Uh, very simple stimuli, just two pictures uh, on a white background, and you would think you would remember the other one, even though you chose X. You'd think you would remember, have a little bit of a memory of why, and you don't. And not the context in which it was that engendered the conjecture, okay? And that's good because, you know, children are learning words very, very fast. We almost never see an error. I mean, there are words that they don't say, but they never seem to say rhinoceros when it's an elephant and so forth and so on. The whole thing proceeds in some positive and rapid fashion, uh, something like eight to 10 words a day. So you do the computation, the rate of learning is extremely high. You certainly uh, wouldn't guess. And, and why no mistakes? Why no mistakes? Uh, so uh, it's got to be something like one trial learning or close to one trial learning. We say really one and a half, one and a week confirmation. So one and a bit.